What's up, y'all? This is Chandler with Big Shaw's Barbecue, and today we're gonna be looking at my new custom-built smoker from Boathouse Barbecue. So I got it opened up. It, this is their three-rack XL package, um, so it just gives more cook space. So each rack is 27 by 20. Uh, down here, that is your water pan. It's gonna catch all the grease, uh, so that way, you know, there's no extra fires that you don't want. And then right here is the fire box. I believe it holds about 20 pounds of charcoal. Um, they have a insulated fire box and all that does is adds uh, essentially more cook time. The, the, uh, the fire efficiency is like 40% better. Um, I decided not to get it, but you know, who knows, I'll probably regret that later on. But I ordered this uh, about a month ago. Today's Saturday, I got it on Monday but it has been raining all week here in Dallas. So I haven't had a chance to uh, fire it up, but today I am and I'm going to, uh, think I'm gonna do some chicken quarters and then maybe a whole chicken just to see how it turns out. I'm really just trying to get the temperature down, get it started and up to temp as fast as I can. So we're not wasting uh, the fuel source. Um, but yeah, shout out to Boathouse Smokers for this. Uh, Brian, the owner, has been amazing throughout this whole process. I think I've been on the phone with him at least two hours time from the time that I started ordering to now. Um, and then he sat here with me for an hour when he delivered it, uh, just asking a bunch of questions on the startup process and all that fun stuff. But yeah, his customer, Brian's customer service is the best I've ever had. I've asked him a whole bunch of questions over text, uh, Facebook Messenger, and just time getting this. So I'm um, gonna load up the charcoal basket uh, and get this started and see what happens. Okay, so I moved the smoker from my garage out here. It weighs about 640 pounds and there's a little lip there. So it's kind of heavy, but I got it there. Uh, one thing I realized is my driveway is an incline and so my water pan here let me switch the camera over. my water pan it was uh, all the water was on this side and there was nothing over here so i put this under it to kind of block it up so that way the water is everywhere the reason why you want the water because the firebox gets real hot and so if you don't have water in here this is going to get a lot hotter than everything else and then as you're cooking the grease and stuff will fall on here and uh, you could potentially have a grease fire. So you don't want that. But uh, you also don't want too much water in there, um, especially if you're doing briskets and pulled pork and stuff like that, uh, because it won't form as good of a bark because of the moisture in the cook chamber. So <clears throat> I got the charcoal in here, ready to go. Um, typically I would add wood chunks, but I'm only doing charcoal for the fact that I want to see how long uh, just a full basket will charcoal will go by itself. Um, and then I have a baseline of, okay, I know how long this will last, how much I need to add and how often. So <clears throat> before you start, we got these on both sides. It's a little ball valve and that controls your airflow into the firebox. So as we get it started, we're gonna leave both sides all the way open, uh, leave both doors open uh, for about 20 minutes. So let's go ahead and get the fire started. So what I'm using to start it is this master built fire starter. It comes with uh, 48 of these little cubes. You can get it at Walmart for like five, seven bucks. I messed up when I was ripping it off, but it works great. Just light it put it in with the charcoal. All right, so I dropped it in the firebox <clears throat> with the charcoal. And so the reasoning or my kind of rationale for putting it in the corner versus in the middle, in the corner, it's one starting spot and it's gonna spread this way. So hopefully in theory, it'll give you more or longer of a cook time. Compared to if you put it here, it's going to spread all ways or every direction at one time. Um, now I, I don't know if this theory is correct, but that just, to me, it makes sense. 
Uh, so I'm just gonna start over here in the corner and I forgot my lighter on my truck. Okay, got my lighter. Let's go ahead and light it. Let's see if we get a little more. And that'll start and we'll kind of start put some around it. Again, I haven't done this before, so this is my first time. And I haven't used this before either, but I read some good reviews. So now we're gonna push it in there all the way. While that's going, <clears throat> again, I'm gonna leave both doors open, leave both of these on both sides, make sure ball valves all the way open, which it is. And I'm gonna let this run for about 20 minutes or so. All right, y'all, it's been about, I don't know, 10 minutes. And I don't know if you can see in the video, but you got smoke coming up through the smoke box. <clears throat> yeah, where the grates are. Um, and then you got a decent amount of smoke coming from the firebox. So we're gonna let it keep going for another 10, 15 minutes before closing up. While uh, waiting for this to get started, uh, one of the things that I did that I forgot to mention is I sprayed Pam on the grates to season it. And what seasoning is, the way it was explained to me is essentially the metal has pores just like we do. Um, and what happens is when the metal gets hot, it does, the pores open up and you want to have some sort of oil on there to go inside, I guess, and that's what's called seasoning. And each time that you cook, um, they open up and then the seasoning from the meat gets inside. Um, and a well-seasoned grill is a lot better than a new grill. Um, the meat just tastes better. I don't, I, I don't fully understand it myself, but that's the way it's explained to me. I remember when I first started, um, with my first smoker and they said to season it, I was like, what does that mean? Do I take like black pepper and put it around? But uh, no, that's essentially what seasoning is. So whenever I close this, I'm going to let it get up to 225. Um, and what Brian, the owner of Boathouse told me is to let it run for like an hour at 225. Um, just to let it season the However it works, I don't know how it works. Well, so I'm gonna let it run for an hour at 225. The smoke's really starting to come out now again. I don't know if you can tell in the video, um, but it's really starting to get going. And so, yeah, let's right. see what happens. So I got the doors closed. And as you can see, we got smoke coming out from up top. Uh, we're nowhere near temp, so we gotta let it get up. Uh, but whenever it gets up to temp, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make some chicken quarters. The reason I'm doing chicken quarters is one, because they're easy uh, for a first cook on here. But two, uh, one of the reasons why I love barbecuing so much is because growing up and watching my dad barbecue, and one of my favorite things that he would make is chicken quarters, and I'd eat like six of them. Um, there was never any leftover chicken in my house growing up because of me, and that's probably why I'm so big. But my dad's the original big shaw. And I guess I'm bigger shot. And for those who don't know me, I am like 6'6", 380 pounds. Um, so I'm pretty big, but that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna let this get going for a little bit. Um, and then we're gonna throw some chicken quarters on there. I'm gonna put about, I got 10 pounds ready, but I have another 10 pound bag I might just throw in there just cause. Um, and then I'm gonna spatchcock a full chicken um, because that is what I will be selling. So I need to see how well it does on here, how long it takes. Um, and yeah, just kind of go from there and that kind of be my tester. Um, Cause like I said, I will be selling things that I cook off of this. So I need to see how the product comes out. But yeah. So I'm sitting out here with the smoker. It's just now at about 130, 140. Um, I think next time rather than doing 30 minutes or uh, 20 minutes, I'm gonna do closer to 30, maybe 35 before closing. Uh, the whole idea is to try to get it to 225 as fast as possible uh, with clean smoke so that way the fuel source you got in there um, will last 
you can get the most out of it. Um, so probably going to be another 30 minutes until it's at 225 um, before I can start cooking on it. All right, y'all, it's been another 30 minutes. So an hour since I closed the door and we're sitting about 210 or 205. Uh, yeah, because every hash is five, I think. Yeah, it's five. So we're sitting about 205. Uh, so when it hits 220, I will start uh, closing some of the valves and adjusting there. But, you know, still got a couple more couple more minutes maybe another 10 15 minutes okay we just hit 220 a couple minutes ago i forgot to record it um but i closed that ball valve all the way and then this ball valve it's open about a quarter half uh halfway somewhere in between there so when this actually hits 225 um, i'll leave it there for about 15 minutes uh and if it stays at 225 um i will uh throw the meat on um, and see the temperature is going to drop obviously from opening it and then when you put the meat on the meat's going to pull you're putting something cold in there and it's going to pull a lot of heat so the temperature will drop and so we'll have to adjust as we go um but yeah we'll see what happens okay so it's been a little longer than expected i closed the valve i think i closed the valve over there too much um so the temperature dropped down all the way back to 200. Um, right now we're back up to 220 uh, and we're almost back up to 225. Um, so I'm going to get ready and uh, get ready to put the chicken on. And then once this gets up to 225, again, like I said, it's going very slow. I'll start, if it climbs over 225, I'll close that down. Um, until we can get a consistent 225, but I'm about ready to put the meat on. All right, I got the chicken, all of it put on. Now let me close it and I'll talk a little bit okay. more. So as you saw, I put, I spread out the chicken on the different shelves. I could have put them all on one shelf, um, but what I wanna see is if the temperature cooks evenly on each shelf, um, as much as you would hope that the whole thing has the same temperature. Um, smokers typically, that's my glove I was wearing. Uh, smokers typically have different hot spots. So I'm trying to see if I can find where those different hot spots are, if some, if one shelf is cooking hotter than another. One of the designs uh, that Boathouse did, uh, I gotta switch the camera one sec. <clears throat> so one of the designs that Boathouse did, rather he was saying that he used to have these flat, um, but then the top would be such a hot spot, but with these, funneling all the hot air because hot air rises obviously in the fire stacks down there i'm sorry the fire box is down there so it's coming up towards the fire stack with it being angled it's allowing some of that hot air to be directed towards the fire stack uh, so it works out better so i opened it obviously the temperature dropped a bunch uh but i'm sure if i give it a couple minutes it'll come back up so we'll see how it goes okay it's been about an hour uh been messing with the airflow a little bit we got a little too hot so i just closed down uh, one of the the valves a little bit um but let's take a look peek inside and see what the chicken looks like see how it's coming along not looking too bad okay so one thing that I noticed when I opened up the smoker uh, to look at the chicken is that the water pan was empty. So I added more water to it, which, uh, cause the water evaporated and it caused a whole bunch of smoke. You know, when you have a pan, you put it under water, um, cause a bunch of smoke. So it got real hot. I closed, let it run for a couple minutes, see what the temperature did. It was staying at like 230, 235. Uh, I think it almost got up to 240 at one point. So I closed down one of the valves a little bit just to see where that would do. And I did that, I don't know, a couple minutes ago. And it's already back down to almost 225 from looking at it. <clears throat> so that helped. The smoke is a little dirtier than I want it to be. But, you know, when you have, when you leave that open, 
I left it open longer than I wanted to, so a lot more air got in there, which is going to cause the temperature to go up as well. It's going to burn a little hotter, but as you can, uh, just from a couple seconds ago, a couple minutes ago, uh, the smoke is clearing up um, and looking a lot better. Um, so I'm going to continue to watch it, see what happens here in another 30 minutes or so. I'm going to open it back up, look at the temperature of the quarters because the quarters excuse me should only take 90 minutes to two hours um so we're at the hour mark so i'll open it up again in about half an hour and take a look inside and see what the temperature looks like okay i just opened it back up took a look at the chicken um on all three racks and they're all about 160 uh which i'm actually really happy about which means that it's cooking evenly on all the racks. I took a look at the whole chicken, um, where the quarter is on the chicken. So the leg and the thigh, it's about 160, but the breast was about 140. Um, so all in all, it's cooking evenly and uh, a little faster than I actually expected, um, but it looks good so far. So we'll check back in in a couple minutes. All right, we're at the two hour mark with the chicken. So we're gonna take it out. Right, open it up, see what it's looking like. Oh, not open far enough. It's looking good. I'm gonna get the temperature off of it and see if it's time to pull. All right, well, I brought some of the chicken inside. That's done. There's still a couple pieces that need to cook. A little bit longer, um, but this is what the finished product looks like. Let's cut it open and see what the inside looks like. So, Smells real good. It's real juicy on the inside. Really hot still, but nice skin. Like I said, you can see how juicy it is on the inside. Hot. Overall, well, I guess I still gotta do the taste test. All right, well, let's give it a try. It's got a really good smoky flavor. Like I said, real juicy. Um, I like it. It's good. All right. I think I'm going to give this video a little wrap up. Overall, I'm extremely happy with the smoker. Uh, again, shout out to Boathouse Smokers. Brian, thank you. Uh, it is amazing. I looked at the coals, and I'm about halfway done, and I've been cooking for since 11, and it's almost 4. So I'm guessing I got another 4 hours uh, cook time. So um, I got at least eight out of it, which is what I was hoping for. Um, and then again, I could add chunks and different stuff as needed to make the cook longer. Um, but yeah, again, overall, extremely happy. Uh, if you guys haven't, go check out Boathouse Smokers if you're looking for a smoker. He delivers all over the country. So uh, he's, they're located in Louisiana, but you don't have to worry about that. He delivers all over the place. Uh, thank you. Please like and subscribe. And I'll talk to you later.